read the story, then answer questions one through four. Beautiful as the Day by E. Nesbitt. I say let's take our spades and dig in the gravel pits. We can pretend it's seaside. Father says it at once, Anithia said. He says there are shells there thousands of years old. So they went. Of course, they had been to the edge of the gravel pit and looked over, but they had not gone down into it for fear father should say they mustn't play there. And it was the same with the chalk quarry. The gravel pit is not really dangerous if you don't try to climb down the edges. But go the slow, safe way by the road, round by the road, as if you were a cart. Each of the children carried its own spade and took it in turns to carry the lamb. He was the baby, and they called him that because Ba was the first thing he ever said. They called Anthea Panthener, which seems silly when you read it, but when you say it, it sounds a little like her name. The gravel pit is very large and wide, with grass growing round the edges at the top, and dry, stringy wildflowers, purple and yellow. It is like a giant's wash bowl, and there are mounds of gravel and holes in the side of the bowl where gravel has been taken out, and high up in the steep sides there are the little holes that are the little front doors for the birds who built their houses. The children built a castle, of course, but castle building is rather poor fun when you have no hope of the swishing tide ever coming in to fill up the moat and wash away the drawbridge, and at the happy last to wet everybody up to their waist at least. Cyril wanted to dig out a cave to play smugglers in, but the others thought it might bury them alive, so it ended in all spades going to work to dig a hole through the castle to Australia. These children, you see, believed the world was round, and that on the other side, the little Australian boys and girls were really walking wrong way up, like flies on the ceiling, with their heads hanging down in the air. The children dug and they dug and they dug, and their hands got sandy and hot and red, and their faces got damp and shiny. The lamb had tried to eat the sand, and had cried so hard when he found out that it was not, as he had supposed, brown sugar, that he had tired out and was lying asleep in a warm, fat bunch in the middle of the half-finished castle. This left his brothers and sisters free to work really hard, and the hole that was to come out in Australia soon grew so deep that Jane begged the others to stop. Suppose the bottom of the hole gave way suddenly, she said, and you tumbled out among the little Australians. All the sand would get in their eyes. Yes, said Robert, and they would hate us and throw stones at us and not let us see the kangaroos or possums or emu brand birds or anything. Cyril and Anthea knew that Australia was not quite so near as all that, but they agreed to stop using the spades and to go on with their hands. This was quite easy because the sand at the bottom of the hole was very soft and fine and dry, like sea sand and there were little shells in it. Fancy it having been wet sea here once, all sloppy and shiny, said Jane, with fishes and conger eels and coral and mermaids, and masts of ships and wrecked Spanish treasure. I wish we could find a gold dewbloom or something, Cyril said. How did the sea get carried away, Robert asked. Not in a pail, silly, said his brother. Father says the earth got too hot underneath, as you do in bed sometimes. So it just hunched up the shoulders, and the sea had to slip off like the blankets do us, and the shoulder was left sticking out and turned into dry land. Let's go and look for shells. I think that little cave looks likely, and I see something sticking out there, like a bit of wrecked ship's anchor, and it's beastly hot in the Australian hole. Number one, select the sentence from the story that supports the idea that the children are imaginative. A. Father says it at once, Anthony says. He says there are shells there thousands of years old. B. Of course they had been to the edge of the gravel pit and looked over, but they had not gone down into it for fear father should, should say they mustn't play there. And it was the same with the chalk quarry. C. The children dug and they dug and they dug and their hands got sandy and hot and red and their faces got damp and shiny. D. Fancy it having been wet sea here once all sloppy and shiny, said Jane, with fishes and conger eels and coral and mermaids. Number two, which sentence best expresses a theme of the story? A, creativity helps children learn. B, safety is more important than having fun. C, imagination makes everyday life more exciting. D, it is important to work at a task until it is complete. Number three, why is the setting important to the story? A, the season is a fun place to find shells. B, the gravel pits inspire the children to come up with new games. C, the cave is a safe 
place to play games. D, in Australia, the children meet other children walking upside down. Number four, what does the sentence below suggest about Cyril and Anthea? Cyril and Anthea knew that Australia was not quite so near as all that, but they agreed to stop using the spade and to go on with their hands. A, they were angry that they had to use their hands. B, they wanted their brothers and sisters to feel safe as they played. C, they thought they could make it to Australia if they used their hands. D, they were very good at digging holes with their hands.